Welcome to WBC Faster Together, the LinkedIn Live series of the Women Business Collaborative. I'm Gwen Young, Chief Operating Officer of the WBC. Today we are joined by Edie Frazier, CEO of the Women Business Collaborative, and Andy Simon, President of Simon Associates and author of Rethink. WBC is an unprecedented alliance of over 70 women business organizations and hundreds of business leaders building a movement to achieve equal position, pay, and power for all women in business. Through collaboration, advocacy, action, and accountability, we are mobilizing thousands to create momentum and accelerate the pace of change. We live our commitment to DEI, and members of our leadership include a diverse board of directors, advisories, and leader councils that include more than 34% people of color. Please check the chat for our nine action initiatives through which we aim to accelerate change and join our movement at wbcollaborative.org. Each week in this series, we offer different ways to advocate change and accelerate impact by presenting data research and best practices, by lifting up the power of women's voices for change, and by showcasing the importance of cross-generational collaboration and the allyship of men in the movement. Today, we want to talk about our half day forum that we are holding next week, May 11th. At this forum, we will showcase trends, transformations and innovations that are accelerating change for women in business. We will do this using our WBC partners, champions, sponsors and stakeholders, women and men that are members of our movement and our collaboration. And the forum will be separated into three tracks, diverse corporate leadership, driving corporate purpose, and helping entrepreneurs soar. We are here with Andy Simon and Edie Frischer to hear more about this forum. So let's talk about the vision behind the forum. You know, who's here, what is it for? Edie, let's start with you. Thanks, Gwen. And let us say we've got about a thousand people registered so far to make certain that you invite your colleagues because we live our movement faster together. We knew with Rethink with Andy Simon, based on our conference last year, that we wanted to stop and reflect our mini conference before our fall conference on truly, given the pressures that we're under after COVID and still the recurrent health problems, the political discord in this nation, the pressures that women are feeling, our sisters of color who have never been more important to us. There was such a need to stop and rethink and to put our focus on what we can do personally and professionally with our teams and our friends and our colleagues to see action. And as WBC shows it with your leadership, the quality of this program should be breathtaking, should be a stepping stone for you to rethink and to advocate and to see the change. Andy? Andy says, it so well, but you know, to some degree, the work that the WBC is doing has to come alive so that our audience can see what's really going on and how they too can capture the innovation, the insights, and the impact of what's going on in corporate, corporate boards, a pipeline getting full of women, Latinas, women of color, women of different backgrounds so they can move up into leadership roles and what we can do together to accelerate that and amplify it. And as you're listening to the folks on May 11th, what you're gonna hear is a recurring theme. Yeah, there are some challenges, there's some hurdles, but there are innovative ways of addressing it. Non-traditional pathways into the boardroom, non-traditional pathways to fill the pipeline. So there are people who can actually move up into leadership positions. You're gonna see in the entrepreneurship Panel great new ideas, programs that WeBank is offering and Springboard and others so that women can not only take an idea and innovate it, but actually grab that to have this, the, the scalability and the capital needed so they can grow successful businesses. 
what women of color are doing because they are forming more businesses than anyone else. Remember, 40% of the business in the US are owned and run by women. And what's going on there so they can really thrive? So as Edie was talking about the momentum that we're seeing, what we want to do is share with you those innovations, the insights, and in fact, the impact. So Gwen, I turn it back to you because I think this is a real good conversation about how we can all come together, collaborate, which is the key, and make things happen solve the problems and not bemoan them. Absolutely. And Andy, I could just throw in with you and Gwen, what a joy to look back to May 2019 when we kicked WBC off with a collaboration yes. with 22 women's business organizations. And Gwen and I with you, Andy, celebrate today 70 three women's business organizations and resources representing about 10 million business women. And clearly the diversity was some five black groups with at least four to five Latino groups with us across the board with Asian groups, all of it. And when we break it down, whether it's now the women in cyber, the digital directors network, it is just extraordinary from Catalyst to all the boardroom groups to all the groups that are working on entrepreneurship, 24 of them, as you know. And when we looked at the face of capital at only 2% for entrepreneurs, we knew we could move that to 5%. So back to Gwen. Well, I wanna take up that theme because I wanna talk about um, kind of what are we gonna see, right? What are we gonna see in these tracks? What are the next frontiers, innovations, as you so perfectly put it, Andy? And a bit of like who we're gonna see, because to your points, the importance is that this is WBC stakeholders that have come together, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're in the C-suite or CEO of a company, we've mm -hmm. come together to talk about how we're actually gonna really drive impact and what's happening today in 2022 that we can build on. So Andy, tell us a bit about what we're gonna hear in the tracks when we, when we mentioned it three times. So let's. Let's talk a bit about those. Well, I have a deep affection for women entrepreneurs, having been one, but also helping others do it. It's not easy to take an idea and turn it into an innovation, much less to grow a business. And so often, as we've learned, women come with the idea and now have all the rest they have to package it with. So on our first one, developing innovative ways to support women entrepreneurs, you know, we have some terrific people, Betty Hines and Laura Taylor, Natalie Bufford-Young, and as you're showing them, this is really a time for all of us to understand the new ways in which we can help women. I love what WeBank is doing. It's no longer simply certify a women business. It's actually providing enormous support, and programs, training, and other types of things. And Betty Hines will tell you about WEW, Women Elevating Women. Listen to the words that are helping each other to in fact grow a business and sustain it. And Natalie Bufford Young, Springboard Enterprises will talk to us about the way in which Springboard can help you capitalize your company and take it to market. It's not enough to have an idea, we have to do something with it. The next panel is bringing financial opportunities to black women entrepreneurs. Nikki Colbert has brought together a group of women there she is, Eddie, Edie has a wonderful face of the magazine, it's amazing. And, and as I know, Delisa Guerriere and her program, the money she's raised for her storytelling program in Nashville, and Jill Johnson, who I know well, with her Institute for Entrepreneurial Leadership, these women are all doing things. And please, and opening doors to capital for entrepreneurs, this is so exciting because Judith Goldcrat, Alex Lebenthal, Catherine Swinnick, Swintek from Golden Seeds, and Rosina Samandina are going to talk to you about this this really getting rid of the myth about women and capital. Women can get capital and in fact can continue to grow. Edie, why don't you talk about rethinking and driving corporate purpose? This I is a good sure, But I want to just remind that we're kicking off with the Women Entrepreneurs in Finance for Capital, a new program with Babson that will truly unlock capital. So thank you, Judith Bocran, and thank you to Babson as we roll out that program. So why don't we rethink driving companies of corporate purpose? So as we look together, we take not only DEI 
and we're asking every company now to disclose their data on DEI in terms of women and women of color from the boardroom to the entry far. And with that, we are now taking on the ESG side, the S out of ESG and say, out of your talent and out of support of your communities, what are we doing to truly be purposeful? And that is an extraordinary panel. And why don't we go to DEI next? DEI, what a panel headed up by Suba Berry, Michelle Gadsden Williams, Joe Linda Johnson from Capital One, and Khalil Smith from Akamai. These are change leaders and are driving data, but deriving the programs for best places to work. And Edie, I'll add one thought to your thoughts there. As I've listened to the pre-meetings, the stories that are going to be told will just inspire the listener, the audience, to, to want to, to join them in the changes that are coming. Please continue. Well, Andy, why don't we go to the corporate health and well-being with Deb Clary, Zeta Smith, of running seniors. You talk about purpose and Zeta Smith being the president of seniors for Sodexo North America. Taya Scott, Scotty, the chief information innovation officer at Morehouse School of Medicine, driving and looking at capital coming into Morehouse School of Medicine and looking at the talent. And of course, Connie McGee, Connie at Humana and truly as we know with Humana, every day is to look at their academy for changing leaders and driving support and health and well being. Extraordinary panel. Then, if we look at accelerating women in corporate leadership, this is a very important group of people. They all are. But I love what Anna Dutra is bringing together with Robert Bard from Latina Style and Sid Wilson the CEO of Hispanic Association and Anna Alonzo, who just called me to talk about how excited she was to be on this panel. What are Latinas doing to help each other open up the channels and encourage others to move up? And the non-traditional pathways to the C-suite, as we're looking at those, this research that WBC is, is supporting here to begin to understand that there's nothing linear about a woman's role to the C-suite. And when you listen to Kimber Matarasso and Jennifer McCollum and Ivy Kusinga, who is, they are each doing interesting and different things to open up those pathways, you're gonna say, ah, there's stuff here I can do. One of the things that we heard is that if there's a pathway, you're gonna to have to take it. You're gonna to have to do things to your own growth in order to capitalize on it. And Dara has put a great group of people together here to share that. And, and add, I mean, it's very unusual for a chief culture officer to report to the CEO and a Chubb Ivy does. And she links between the CHRO and the CEO to really drive culture change. So we're going to learn models from all of this on women's leadership and the program that Linkage runs. And as you said, the non-traditional pathways it is the time to shine the light. And it's interesting, Edie, when I spoke to Ivy, because I'm an anthropologist, we do a lot of culture change work. She has only 400,000 people to change. She said, where do you begin? I said, a step at a time, a little, a little, and then swoosh, you'll find everybody is coming. And that's just her smile will capture that for you. The last group is women climbing into tech executive roles. And, and Christy Lamar, has really seized upon this as an opportunity for us to understand better the way in which we get women in STEM. And I know Edie wants to talk about that because we got to get women into STEM to stay in STEM and then to move up into leadership roles in the businesses that are being formed out of STEM. Evelyn Anderson will tell you that IBM has a wonderful track, but the women have to know how to access it. And they often don't have other women mentoring them there. None of this is easy, but all of it is happening and happening with great gusto. Edie, please. 
It's terrific. You know, Lakshmi was at Boeing when we first worked with her to build Million Women Mentors, and now named CIO of Sanofi and the worldwide responsibility of driving change. And as you said, with we couldn't not say enough about Deloitte and what they're doing to really build the technology culture and how pleased we are with Johanna Jones as the ITSMF for Blacks in Technology and our own efforts. So Gwen Young and we will share, we will put out the only and first women tech execs report in October of showing the change and the acceleration and the opportunities all the way up the system. Now, Gwen, we shut off the, the stream and I appreciate time, but um, Brittany Cole and, um, and Felicity Hassan and I are going to do the wrap up. And people keep asking me, what are you going to talk about? You don't have to put it back up, we're fine. But the, the interesting question for us is what is the leadership role? How do we expand and propel women this is all about rethinking and accelerating diversity and women's leadership in business. And we want to come back at the end and talk about the call to action. So when you leave, there's stuff to do and you can do it with your team, with your company or for yourself. Gwen, back to you. Well, I want to pick up. Thank you for that. So I want to pick up. We're going to be hearing a lot May 11th. We went through the who, the what and some of the what. So we've got a preview and a teaser for everybody. But Edie, you talked a lot about sort of what are the trends, innovations, and Andy used the word opportunities in 2022. What does the business landscape look like? Like what are what are we seeing not only with putting this this panels together and learning, as Edie mentioned, from the companies, but what are you all seeing? Why don't we talk on just the corporate world and then we can talk entrepreneurs? But on the corporate world, we really are seeing a drive to show transparent data of change. How exciting to see some 75 companies that have gender parity on their boards of directors. And when we look at nine of the top companies with CEOs that are women, their 50% boards are just so exciting. And where they are, we're finding better return on investment, more sensitivity to the women uplifting and to diversity. But what we are seeing is that whole area is making the difference of whether it's the great resignation or the great opportunity to drive your culture change, to make sure that there are the kinds of benefits and the word flexibility as we've never seen, whether it's how many days you're open in the office, what do you need to support your, your work or your parental leave? The areas that we're seeing to get CEOs to stand up, to get companies to stand up and to listen to what they need to do to be great companies to work for and partners with WBC and all of our partners. And Andy, we say the same thing right about the entrepreneurial community and the professional community as we all look about the new day in the time of negativity of this nation, we've never been more optimistic. It's the private sector together that's gonna make the difference as we stand up for women equal position pay and power. Andy? I want to add to your inspirational thoughts there about the ally of her. I think the men are coming to the realization, and I think they're enjoying this, that this is a conversational transformation, that the men and the women both need to align themselves with better purpose as we're looking forward. So it isn't, it isn't a me and a you, it's a we. And together we can do far better. For entrepreneurs, I mean, the growth of entrepreneurial businesses, remember, there are 13 million women-owned businesses in the U.S. That's 40% of the businesses. That is a huge array of different things. We, our job is really to keep them growing and surviving. 
and doing it because they are doing it for all kinds of reasons with great ideas. The innovation is there and they end up becoming the big businesses later. But I also to, to follow your thought, when we watch the large companies transform, they become role models. And I truly know that word that I love to say, you know, Marion Edelman's quote, if I can't see it, I can't be it. And so I'm looking at what we are seeing so that others can become it and it becomes contagious. And I'm excited about the contagion. You know Thank what, you. Andy, we quote Maya Angelou because in negative times, and when she said, get rid of negative people in your life, yes, gravitate yes. towards positive people that are change leaders. That's exactly what we're doing with WBC and this conference. And back to Gwen Young, because at 2.30, when we end the conference, let Gwen tell you our big announcement. Gwen? So this is perfect. So join us for all the thoughts. Join us for all the innovations. You got a good teaser of it today, as much as the positivity and opportunities. And at the end of the conference, we will be announcing our CEO, award winners in gender and diversity, and what we call our trailblazer, awards for gender equity and diversity. And these are leaders of companies and leaders of organizations, leaders in their communities that have created pathways. And those awards will be given at our annual summit, September 21st and 22nd. So we'll be able to close out May 11th, as we always do, not just with what the best practices are and what the opportunities are, but where we're going next, where we're going faster together. So thank you, Edie. And thank you, Andy, for your insights today. That's all thank we have you, time for. <laughs> but we invite you to wbcollaborative.org to learn more about our initiatives, where, as we talked about today, we are to increase women in the C-suite in the boardroom, to address the underrepresentation of women in entrepreneurship, access to capital, technology, and to advance the pipeline of women leaders that are going to bring gender and pay parity and diversity, equity and inclusion to the business landscape. So join a movement and then join us next Thursday. Andy, you'll be excited to hear May 12th, where we're talking about allyship mm -hmm. with Pat Shea of Shea Advisory Services and the head of our WBC oh. Ally Her Initiative, who's discussing with Michael Norris, the CEO of Urban Legacies and a WBC board member, allyship. And join us weekly to keep up to date on our next guests, our progress, the movement for gender parity in business and the latest issues. Follow us on social media at WB Collaborative on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn and have a great Thursday, May 5th. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. See you on Wednesday.